Thanks. Thanks, Commissioner, for coming along today and for your presentation. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you about is if you've seen a, a study done by Influence Map in the last few weeks, which really uh, shows the ramping up of the production of shale gas um, in, in, and frack gas in the US to replace Russian gas. But also the extent of it is something they say is like peace washing. It's like using the uh, war to ramp up the extraction to a, a very, very extreme degree and huge profits being making, made by the fossil fuel industry across the US on the back of this. And what have you seen the study and what your view of it is? Um, and the second question is kind of in line with it, is that do you see, genuinely see, that our expansion of LNGs and new gas projects is sustainable or indeed any way in line with the climate goals, given that the International Energy Agency and others have explicitly said to us that we must not have any new fossil fuel infrastructure if we're to reach our Paris targets? And that seems to be increasingly becoming, you know, a, a far away future to reach uh, the, the Paris targets. Um, and the second question is on the question of the energy market itself. I mean, we have a situation here in Ireland, I don't expect you to be familiar with our history, but uh, about 20 years ago, before we deregulated the market, we had a, a, a national company, the Electricity Supply Board, which supplied all our electricity, and we had the cheapest electricity for the consumer in the whole of the EU. Now we've one of the dearest. And I had an interview with the ESB during the week, and they were explaining to me, although they don't profit vastly from the huge increases in energy prices, and many companies do, not just in Ireland, but across the board, they are subject to international energy price mechanisms. Is it not time for you as the Commissioner and for the EU General to be pressing for a review of how our energy is priced on the global market and to do away with this extraordinary and, uh, and uh, obscene profiteering that's happening at the same time as ordinary people are driven into energy crises? We um, want to well, send clear message to our trading partners that uh, they can uh, be our trustworthy partners if they take care of the environmental considerations. And that's why I was mentioning already earlier, um, besides the CO2 emissions, uh, methane is a second potent greenhouse gas. And, and uh, we are well, sending clear message to our um, uh, trading partners who are producing gas, natural gas, that they have to take care of the venting and flaring. And, and, uh, we are strong supporters of the International Methane Emissions Observatory. So this is also, um, um, well, um, the topic that we are regularly discussing uh, with our uh, US counterparts and well, uh, US companies are committed to take care of the methane leakage. Saying that, well, uh, of course, um, Russia as, as a producer has been uh, relatively, well, non-transparent how they are producing their uh, fossil fuels. So, so uh, replacing their production with uh, alternatives um, doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, that um, we will end up uh, in a situation where, where our emissions are growing. On the contrary, we will try to find alternatives uh, that are uh, renewable. Um, now, um, on, uh, on the global level, the prices, high fossil fuel prices, they are impacting uh, us a lot, but uh, some poorer regions will be impacted even, uh, even more. And of course, we are uh, monitoring the direct um, connection between high crude oil prices and what the impact is to the food price, because uh, at certain level, this might mean that, uh, that there are um, 
countries who cannot uh, afford uh, sufficient um, food for their uh, inhabitants, and um, and this is a serious serious risk. We have done together with our partners. Um, we have uh, um, made attempts to um, to control the world market prices. As you know, all EU member states they have strategic oil reserves, um, and, um, and together with our international energy agency organisation partners, we have made twice a decision this year to release partially these reserves. By doing that, we aim to well stabilise the volatile crude oil market globally, so that um, poorer regions will benefit out of it. And, and by doing that, we also compensated um, the um, declining volumes uh, that are coming from Russia. As I was mentioning, we have play, put in place already six sets of sanctions. The first one was aiming their ability to produce um, oil and, uh, and to, uh, to import necessary technological equipment for their refineries. So this already impacts the world crude oil market. And by releasing our strategic um, reserves, we have done uh, our attempts globally to control the market price. And it has, um, well, there were some expectations that the market price will be higher than it is right now. On electricity market, well, uh, we tasked our regulators, European regulators, to give us um, analysis, what can we do, how we can uh, open our electricity market design in the way that uh, it will be more resistant for unwanted volatility. And our aim is um, to incentivize investments into renewables, because um, renewables will deliver um, most of ours uh, electricity with um, lower prices, but there might be hours when, when there is a volatility because um, peak demand uh, requires also fossil fuel um, power generation to come into the market. Uh, but our aim is to achieve a market that, where the average price is, um, is lower uh, compared to the situation where power generation comes from fossil fuels. I missed the third question. Uh, third question was a piece of the high prices. It's a question around prices, the ESP prices, wasn't it? No, I, mean, I really only had two. My yes. first oh. was for you to comment oh. on yeah. the, uh, so. the peace washing, mm -hmm. the massive increase in, 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 in shale gas from the US, and is this sustainable with our mm -hmm. Paris targets? And how, given that the International Energy Agency has explicitly told us no new fossil fuel infrastructure, how can we uh, ever hope to meet Paris? Um, well, I think that uh, the COP uh, last year in Glasgow was a success. We uh, well managed to convince uh, major uh, um, uh, economical um, players to commit also for climate neutrality targets. And that also has uh, triggered the high demand for LNG. So, um, well, we all know that, uh, that China is uh, using more and more LNG to replace uh, coal. And, uh, and um, that means that, uh, that their emissions year by year um, have to uh, have to decrease. They have promised that uh, they will reach a peak within this decade, and then uh, their emissions will will be uh, declining. And uh, and indeed, we will meet Paris uh, commitment only with the help of global players. Europe is responsible for nine percent, and uh, lots of our international work is dedicated to. Uh, to convince um, well, other, uh, other governments to do their uh, part. And I guess that we are successful 
because they do see that our Green Deal is not only about um, our responsibility to take care of uh, uh, global warming and these challenges, but they understand that this is also a growth strategy, that uh, we will replace uh, the export bill, sorry, import bill, that was last year 300 billion euros that we paid for um, gas and oil and coal. We will replace it uh, with something that, uh, that we produce here. And if, uh, if um, this is convincing enough that this is also um, a strategy that creates jobs here, uh, then they will follow the path.